Turpin's been a legend 200 years or more With stories, plays and roundelays written by the score Telling of his daring, his horsemanship, his fate The greatest highwayman of all histories relate Stand and deliver became his famous cry Stand and deliver your money or you die Turpin rode the highway, a pistol in his hand, and held up coaches of the rich until his cry of stand, his cry of stand and deliver, shouted in the night, was feared by all the gentry whose creed was might is right, stand and deliver became his famous cry, stand and deliver your money or you die. Now we tell a story that's never yet been told Of how the young Dick Turpin became a robber bold A tale that never till now has seen the light of day The workings of injustice that made him hangman's prey Stand and deliver became his famous cry Stand and deliver your money or you die Stand and deliver became his famous cry Stand and deliver your money in the woods. Were you shooting at him? Just to scare him off. But next time... I only snared a rabbit for the pot. The whole village has always done that. His old lordship never minded. Well, this one does. Poaching is a felony. And this brat, and you, Turpin, and everybody else had better learn that. I've got orders, see? Get off my land. Now keep out of his lordship's woods. All of you. There's man traps in there. Man traps? In this day and age, you can't do this. Well, I'm warning you. Keep out. Come on. Up we go. I only went in there to get a rabbit to take home. Otherwise, we ain't got anything to eat. I've taken rabbits from there since I was your size. Wait here. I'll get you dinner for you. You can't go in there. He'll shoot at you. I'll give him time to move off. Don't worry. I know these woods like the back of my hand. So you wouldn't listen. Now raise your hand so we'd blow you in half. And his lordship will want to see you all in one piece. I 
I want you all to witness this and spread the word. You're Richard Turpin, tenant of the Dale Farm. Yes, my lord. You heard my orders about keeping out of my woods and you chose to ignore them. Poaching's a felony. Your father never cared if people took a rabbit or two for the pot, my lord. Well, I do. Poaching can get you two years in prison. That's the law. No one invokes that law hereabouts. Those days are gone, my lord. Well, I intend to invoke the law. Are you going to deny a man a rabbit to eat? Times are hard. For some of us. Don't argue with me, fellow. Keep a civil tongue in your head. I'm not a servant, my lord. I'm a yeoman farmer. My family's been on this land as long as yours. Perhaps they were less insolent than you are. You were not only caught poaching, you were seeing damaging property. Property? Man traps that can half kill a man. Man traps aren't against the law. Then the law's wrong. I'm not going to argue with you, Turpin. I'm going to deal with you. I'm magistrate and justice of the peace. And I hereby fine you 50 guineas for poaching. If you fail to pay that within 24 hours, you'll face me in court and I'll jail you for two years. 50 guineas? My lord, I haven't got 50 pence until my harvest's in. Then go to jail for the lack of it. It's your choice. Now get out of here. Anybody else caught poaching in my woods will get the same treatment. Is that clear? Now, get back to your work. Lord Thompson! I don't want a lecture or an argument, Mr. Evans. I'd hoped to inherit a lawyer who'd be on my side when the estates came to me. Well, I served your father, and my served lord. me. There are one or two things I want you to do. I don't intend to bury myself in the country the way my father did. I'm going back to London. And for that, I need money, Mr. Evans. Ready money, now. And you're going to get it for me. Yes, but, my lord... Oh, don't interrupt me. It's really very simple. This morning, I find one of the tenant farmers, a fellow called Richard Turpin, 50 guineas for poaching, and gave him 24 hours to pay. I heard that, my lord. And you know as well as I do, it's impossible for him, or any farmer here, to pay an enormous fine at such short notice. So much the better. Then he can go to jail and lose his farm. Lose his farm? But if, if somebody advanced him the money to pay this fine... He would still lose his farm. I understand the fellow's months behind with his rents. So you can draw up the papers and I'll evict him, unless he pays up for that, too. You're being unjust, my lord. His mother passed away last year and his father's just died of a long illness that took every penny they had. My dear Evans, his private life is no concern of mine. He either pays his debts or I'll evict him. We'll put a new tenant in his farm and charge a premium for a lease. Why not? You create bad feeling throughout the entire county. Turpin's well liked. I'm not really interested in the opinions of a pack of yokels. Why should you be? I count many of my friends among this pack of yokels, Lord Carmsden. Make out the eviction order and include in the farm stock a black mare I've seen the fellow riding. She's far too good for him and I want her. I urge you to reconsider this, my lord. The boy is a good farmer. He'll pay all his debts if you give him time. Just do what I say. There's a good fellow. And you can warn every other tenant who's behind with his rents that he's liable to get the same treatment. I need money, Mr. Evans, and unless I'm mistaken, this is a perfectly legal way to get it. To the person of Richard Turpin, tenant of Dell Farm in the county of Essex, by Lord Carmsden. I've come to collect the money for your fine. Have you got it? No. Right. Have you the money to pay your back rent? Why, no. Then his lordship says to evict you and sell your farm stock so you can pay both debts. Here's my orders to prove it. Evict me? Can't your master wait till my harvest in? I'll pay him then. No. It's now or out you go. Herd this cattle up to the manor and get that mare. Bailiff, you're not taking Bess. She's not farm stock, she's mine. I raised her from a foal. She's listed here as farm stock. Good day. But... Take your hands off my horse! Now then, Turpin, I don't want any trouble for you. Turpin, it's no easy way to deal with the floor. Now be sensible. Oh.
Lord Carmston. What are you doing here, fellow? I came to ask for time, so I can pay you what I owe you. Mm, I see you've lost your insolence and come here begging. If you'll give me till my harvest's in, I'll pay you, I promise. So far as I'm concerned, you have paid. I've nothing more to say to you. Take yourself off. Your bailiffs have evicted me. I was born and raised here, my lord. Farming's all I know. I don't know any other way to make a living. Then you'll have to find one, won't you? Is that girth tight enough? You hadn't any right to take my mare with a farm stock. She didn't belong to my father, she's mine, my own. It can't be the law that you can take her. I am the law here, and I'm taking the mare and part payment of your debts to me. There's nothing more to discuss. Yes, there is. Throw this fellow off the place. Come on now, let me go. Let go of me. <laughs> with a whip! Turpin's arrest. Horse stealing, robbery with violence. The man's dangerous. My lord, this would never have happened if you'd been fair to him. Don't defend the blackguard! I'm warning you, Evans. If he comes to you, or you find out where he is, and don't have him arrested. 
Heaven help you. Well, do you understand me? Speak up. Oh, yes, yes, my lord. And that goes for everybody on my land. Every cottager, every farmer. I want this man to be. Yes, my lord. My men are out looking for him now, and when we find him, I'll make an example of him. Nobody's going to make a fool of me. Uh, no, 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 my lord. Good night, my lord. For a moment, it spotted me. You must be out of your mind to raid the manor like that. The mare belongs to me. I'm not giving her up. You could get ten years in a penal colony for this. But I only took what's mine. He cheated me out of my farm and stole my horse. You're right, Dick, morally, but you've broken the law acting as you have. I pleaded and argued with Carmsden. Now you've made yourself an outlaw by behaving like a hothead. You've got to get away, and quickly, as far as you can. London, London's your best chance. You'll just be another pebble on the beach there. Have you any money? Only when I stand up... Take this. It's only 12 guineas. I'll try to get more to you later. Thank you, sir. But where? If you reach London, there's a man named Fielding. He runs a small livery stable at Blackjack Lane in Aldgate near the river. He's an old villain, but I did him a good turn once. Tell him I sent you. He'll hide you. Mr. Evans, sir, why are you doing this for me? Perhaps because too many of us accept injustice. You at least struck back. But I don't want to get you involved, sir. Remember what the poet said, lad. Any man's death diminishes me because I'm involved in mankind. You're on your own now, Dick. You're an outlaw. You don't get a second chance. If they catch you, they'll hang you. They won't catch me. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye. You'll wait. Go now. Comforts of home, Mr. Fielding. I'll take it. And Mr. Evans told you to come to me. <laughs> He's a good man, Mr. Evans. But why would he send you here, I wonder? A smart young chap like you. Because I haven't got much money, Mr. Fielding. Oh. Oh, I see. Not much money, eh? But that's a valuable-looking horse you have there, eh? You wouldn't have uh, stolen it, I suppose. <laughs> no, no, of course not. I've had her since she was a foal. Oh, that's so, that's so. You gave her a hard ride last night, you say? Yes. What about it? Oh, nothing, nothing. Just curious. An old man's vice curiosity, Master Turpin. <laughs> Not much money, a valuable horse. Mr. Evans sending you to hide here. I didn't say hide. Well, now, if we don't have confidence in each other, where are we, Mr. Turpin, eh? <laughs> I wasn't born yesterday, you know. <laughs> Do you want to rent me this place or not? Oh, yes, yes, any friend of Mr. Evans. What about ten shillings a week? A month, you mean? Oh, dear. No, 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 Master T. This is a big responsibility for me. A young man hiding out, maybe in a little trouble with the law, eh? I didn't say that. No, but you didn't say you wasn't either. <laughs> no business of mine, Master T, so long as the risk is worth my while, eh? So, ten shillings a week and two weeks in advance. Hmm? I'll pay you one week in advance. I might be staying longer than that. Oh, I'd be happier with two weeks, you know, just to make it worth my while for taking the risk, eh? I'm a poor man, have a heart, sir. Oh, you'll be 
be as safe here as a church, Master T. You can depend on it. me and charge him. These young ruffians haunt the street like rats. No, wait. Hey! Hey! That's all right. I'll handle him. Now go back to work, you rascal. Now then. It's all right. I'm not going to beat you. What? And you didn't hand me over? And let your mum and dad know you're a pickpocket, a thief. <laughs> Is that funny? Mum and Dad? I've got no mum and Dad. Me mum left me at the foundling's home. Some home fed us like dogs and beat us worse. I got over the wall as soon as I could climb. What's your name? Jimmy. Jimmy the Dip, they call me. Who are you, mister? I'm... Never mind that. I've just arrived in town. Yeah, you must have, leaving your purse in your coat like that. For you to steal? I've got to live, mister. By stealing? Of course. What else is there? I've got to pay my share where I live. Where do you live? Oh, we're friends. There's a whole lot of us. Abrams, Adam, Tyler's, Bites and Blosses. What do you mean? You are ignorant, ain't you? Abrams are beggars, Adam, Tyler's buy what you steal, and Bites and Blosses are sharpers. Your friends? You bet they're my friends. We lie up snug and eat good all the time. Just so long as everyone pays a share to Jeremiah. Who's Jeremiah? Oh, he's... Car! What a marvellous great horse! She's a beauty, ain't she? Aye. I raised her myself, didn't I, Bess? And I've got to sell her. Because you stole her, eh, mister? Stole her? I heard you with old man Fielding. I bet you're on the run because you pinched her. Now, if you want to sell her without anybody asking any questions, you leave it to me. I'll handle it. You? Yeah. You got country bumpkins sticking out all over you. Without me, you'll get skinned alive. I owe you the favour, so I'll handle the sale for you. How's that? All right. Put it in your inside pocket. You do need looking after. Hello, Annie. Hello, Jimmy. Who's your friend? He's just in town. A horse thief, Annie. Oh. I thought... Nah, she can see you through a brick wall. Come on, I'll show you round. You'll be all right with me. You ought to work outside the opera house today. Got a new Italian tenor there, makes all the women cry. Could be good pickings. No, you don't, you three. He's with me. You need watching every minute. There's Jerry Meyer, who owns the place. Come on. Hello, Jimmy, lad. Hello, Jerry Meyer. Take care of my friend, will ya? I'll be back in a minute. New to my place, eh? You've got a nice clean cut of the country, Joe. Well, how are you? I didn't mean take care of him that way. He's with me. Oh, sorry, lad. Sorry. 
Your pigeon and no poaching, eh? Quite right. Well then. No offence, mate. No offence, just my joke. Well, how do you like my little club, eh? Well, it's uh, not dull, I'll say that. One big family, mate. That's how I see them, young and old alike. All my children. They get into trouble, want a bed, or a meal, a loan, or a bit of advice. They come to old Jeremiah. Starve in the streets or the deadliest prison, most of them. But not me. Yes? I'll tell you what, Mary. I've taken a liking to you. How about a cup of wine? Yes? And, uh, a nice game of cards. I'd, uh, I'd like a cup of wine. Thank you. No, you don't, Jerry Meyer. There's someone here who might buy your horse. Come on. He's the one. I can get you to meet him. Tom King. Tom King? The highwayman? That's right. Anyway, I haven't got a Mr. King, there's a man here with a horse to sell. A beauty. New to Jeremiah's, eh? Man with a horse to sell. All right, let's talk about it. What's your name? Dick. Dick Turpin. Where from? From Carmston, in Essex. Ah, is that where you stole the horse? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't steal her. She's mine. I bred and raised her. Her? A mare? <laughs> I never ride a mare. They bring me bad luck. And in my profession, I need all the luck I can get. All the speed, too, I'd have thought. And my mare has the legs of anything I've seen. Plenty of females have got pretty legs, but you still can't trust them. Sorry. All right, gentlemen. Not me, mate. The arms can't be done. Well, if you're not interested. Uh, just a moment, fellow. Your first time at Jeremiah's, eh? A part of the initiation is to try your luck at dice with me. He's right, mate. No, I've only got ten guineas in my purse. Well, well. Only ten guineas, eh? Well, who knows? You might double it or treble it. I'm really doing you a favor, fellow. That's right, young sir. I mean, what's ten guineas? Tom has been out of luck all day. Isn't that right, mate? That's right. Oh, horrible the luck Tom's had. I've never played a dice before. Well, that's the kind that always wins. Beginner's luck. But I don't know how. Oh, it's easy enough. You throw a two, a three, a twelve, you lose. And if... No! I'd consider it uncivil if you refuse to play, Mr. Turpin. And I'm sure all these gentlemen will, too. Very uncivil. All right. Good. Put your money up. I'll match it with this. You throw first. Good luck, mate. No, don't! Well, well. A deuce. You're right, young lad. You are no hand of the dice. <laughs> Two is a loser. <laughs> Use some more of those, Jeremiah, couldn't we? That's the poor country bumpkin. That <laughs> breaks your heart, so <laughs> Bring me my pistol. I got it. <laughs> King. Ah, oh, there's a good lad. You're not safe to be let out alone. You got plat like a pigeon. Look. <laughs> Dice. You're lucky he left you your clothes. Country bumpkin and plump pigeon. 
Tom King! These are yours. What's the matter? You want to roll them a few times and see the juices come up so you can be sure they're yours? Are you suggesting that I play with loaded dice? Yes. Come on now, gentlemen. Take things nice and easy now. This can be settled quite friendly like, eh? Friendly like? Playing with loaded dice? But you're now broken me. Who's going to prove that? Give me back my money. You can't give him back his money, Tom, because it might look as though he was right. So what are you going to do? Do you all move? You're a reckless fellow. I might have killed you. Hmm, perhaps I can use a reckless fellow. But what I have in mind, two could be better than one. Let you are, mate. A chance to work with the king of the road. You say you're from Carms in Essex. You could be just the fellow I want. That's the way I'm heading. You know the manor there? Yes, I know Carms the manor. Well, there's a new lord there, they tell me. Just inherited. Red hot gambling man. It's new market races tomorrow. Well, he'll be going there for certain. With his pockets lined with gold. You might as well give it to us as to the bookmakers. You want to come with me to collect it? Why not? I'm your man. Well, come on. Now you're talking. Hey, Tom. Tom. Yeah. And that's the last you'll see of him. Tom will give him the slip, you'll see. <laughs> Good riddance. A dram to ease the pain, as they say on the race course, Sir John. Thank you, no. I have no palate for brandy at this hour. How about you, my Lord Judge? No, sir. With a long day of the Assize Courts ahead of you, why not? Lord Carmsden, I'm grateful to you, and I'm sure Sir John is too for driving us as far as the Assizes. It's nothing, not out of my way at all. I've gone to Newmarket from there. And that surprises me. As a Justice of the Peace, it's your duty to be at the Assizes yourself. How can the law oh, be administered? duty is a bore. And when it coincides with the race meeting... Bah! You have Sir John here to represent us local magistrates. There's only one thing that could have persuaded me into court today. If a horse thief I've been hunting for the past 36 hours was there for you to sentence. A local farmer. A tenant of Carmsden's. From what my people tell me, you gave him pretty rough justice outside the courts. You'd do well to be less soft with these yokels. A pack of surly dogs, a whole lot of them. I don't find them so. But then I don't house my tenants in tumble-down farms and leaky cottages. I look after my people, good times and bad. And it works. Very noble of you, I'm sure. If there's unrest in the country and a rising crime rate, it's because crime is a symptom, not a disease. A symptom of what? Of oppression, poverty, the indifference of some of us to our obligations. Obligations? Give the people an inch and they'll take a mile. Treat them unjustly and you'll force them to take more than that. They'll fight back. If they do, the hangman's the answer. Say he'll come this way. All right, when he does, I'll ride up ahead and take him. You stay here and keep watch. When I've got the money, we'll take separate roads and ride for Chelmsford. We'll meet there at, say, the, uh, the Bell Inn and share the profits. It's the King's Arms at Chelmsford, not the Bell. Right? Oh, yes, so it is. All right. We'll meet there. Ready, here he comes. Out on the road, 
gentlemen. Well, well, Lord Justice Humphreys. It's an added pleasure seeing you. No tricks, you. Throw whatever arms you have into the lake and quickly, or I'll blow your brains out. Oh, insolent dog! And how many good fellows have you jailed or hanged this week, my lord? Your turn will come for that, I warrant you. I hope your purse is as full as your mouth. All right, throw them down, gentlemen. And yours. That's the spirit. What about you, my fine buck? You want your brains blown out? Where's your purse? Inside the coach, in my cloak. Right, fetch it. And no tricks. You've got him for sure. Now you stand and deliver. Mask off, fellow. Let's see your face. I'll give you three seconds. Good lad. Stand and deliver, Tom King. Stay where you are. Leave those purses and throw me yours. Yes, yours. Come on. Think yourself lucky, partner. Now clear off. If you think because of now this... your purse, Lord Carmsden. You took my farm. So you can start paying for the harvest that's rightly mine. What? This way. I swear, if I see you again, Turpin, I'll kill you. I said your purse. You thieving dog, if I had a weapon... There's I'd... one right behind you. In there! Be all gentlemen. Pick up your purses. I've no quarrel with you. Good day to you. What kind of a highwayman is this? The Lord. As they say on the racetrack, Carmston. Have a dram to ease the pain. <laughs> yes, it could have been my biggest haul for months. A coachload of gamblers on the way to the races, and they had to have an armed escort. What? Four outriders. And there was I, single-handed. And what happened to the bumpkin you took with you, Tom? Now, he bolted as soon as he saw them. Yeah. I hope for his sake I don't run into him again. Yeah. <laughs> and what happened then? The escort saw me. They came straight at me. Two from one side and two from the other. Of oh, course. So what did you do? I took a shot at each pair. I winged one fellow and blew another's wig off his head. What are you doing here? You better get out quick, mister, before rose. Tom King sees you. I've got something to return to him. Good for you, Tom. Good for you. No! Listen a minute, he'll kill you. The near side horse reared up and kicked over the traces. The other one panicked. The coach slewed round, everyone hollering. And I rode on past them. With my horse at the hedge, and then sail up over. I've brought back your purse, Tom. Minus my ten guineas. 
I finished the hold up by myself. After you ran away. You liar. Hey. No, no, gentlemen, no fun in here. Oh, oh, stop it! Oh, 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 no no fun in here. I'm for Torpen. Who's with that? I ain't. Oh, I'm oh, 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 You bully. Oh, bully. Stop it. Oh, I said no violence. <laughs> Tommy, there wasn't no fighting with armed escorts. That right? Don't listen to him. He's a cheat and a liar. He bungled the whole thing. If I hadn't rescued him, he'd be in jail by now. Next time, I'll kill you. You said that before. Now, clear out, Tom. And go and tell your stories when nobody knows you for a liar. Go on, get up! And take your mates with you. We certainly took care of them, didn't we? Thank you, Jimmy. Yeah, that you did. And you've done a hold up too, mate. You're welcome here. You're one of us now. Thank you, Jeremiah. But the way things are, I think I'll go my own way. If you want to work with me, you can come along too. Me? If you want to. Here, yeah, wait a minute, Jimmy. You're not going to leave me. Not after all the education I've given you. Why, I taught you your trade. Make up your mind, you're coming or not? Yes, I'll work with you. Well, that's gratitude for you. I'm as shocked at what happened as you are, my lord, and amazed that Turpin is still in the district. The unfortunate thing is that word will get about and, I'm afraid, make a lot of very foolish people laugh at you. That's bad. Songs in taverns, rude drawings. Very bad. My footman and coachman won't talk. I'll see to that. And unless you do... I? I wouldn't think of it, naturally. This is persecution! But started by yourself, after all. What? You dispossess Turpin, find him without trial. The fellow's a thief outside the law. I'm afraid you put him there, my lord. Are you defending the fellow, a thief who held us up and, and robbed us? He didn't rob me. Oh, Lord Humphreys. He robbed me and hinted he might come back for more. It's persecution, I tell you. Well, there is one way to end it, of course. By giving him back his farm. Give him? Give him back his farm? I'll tell you what I'm going to do, sir. I'm going to post a reward for him all over the county. One hundred guineas for his capture, dead or alive. A hundred guineas? That's a lot of money, my Have the reward posted everywhere, do you hear? Yes, my lord. Well, I better be getting on my way, too. You have my sympathy, Carmston. And, uh, good hunting. But, uh, be careful at the water jumps. They ran the turban out low on his head reward a hundred guineas for him alive or dead what future now for turpin the wanted man is he the jailer and the hangman wait to seal his destiny that stand and deliver was the reason why stand and deliver your money or you die gentlemen and throw your purses on the ground no tricks or i'll shoot what are you doing when are we going to start working dick holding up another coach if you're better at it than tom king we can make a fortune i'm not holding up any more coaches or robbing people that's not the kind of life i want you mean you're not going to be a highwayman of course not what are you going to do then well, the only thing i can do go away leave the country I have the money to do that now I can have no future here, and neither can you, so I suppose I'd better take you with me. 
Take me? Then you might become something better than a pickpocket. I'll have to go and see if I can find a ship to take us. Then we'll be safe. Now, come on. Help me clean up in here. I have reward posters from a fellow called Turpin put up all over my home county. He's a horse thief. Used to be one of my tenants. I offered a hundred guineas for his capture, and it's brought no results. Now I know why. Turpin's in London. You sure of that, my lord? He was seen here two days ago by one of the mail coach men. That's why I'm in town. I've raised the reward to 200 guineas. 200 guineas? That's a fortune. Of course, I've uh, heard of this, Turpin, my lord. You have? Oh, yes. There's a comic song being sung about him in the taverns, my lord. Uh, goes like this. Uh, Dick Turpin was a farmer who tilled the rolling lands. Lord Carmson was the villain who took it from his hands. Dick Turpin rode the highway, revenge he had to take. One day he met Lord Carmson and threw him in the lake. Stand and deliver. That's enough. Reach for... Big pardon, my lord. I shouldn't have mentioned that very rude song, my lord. <laughs> Don't stand there grinning, you blockheads. I want these posters put up all over the city. A comic song. This fellow Turpin's going to be caught and hanged. Then we'll see who laughs. Now take these and go. And I want results, do you hear? These are smoking out, my lord. Don't you worry. Two hundred guineas reward, eh? Well, that'd be a nice piece of change for every one of us, if this Turpin's still in the town. He is, Jeremiah. I've seen him and Jimmy the Dip day before yesterday down by the docks. Here. Yeah, I saw them last night. They crossed my pitch at Oldgate. I'm sure it was him. Leastways, it was Jimmy. Then Jimmy will be the clue the word he's hiding out. Two hundred guineas, mates. That's a blooming fortune. Well, we all know Jimmy. Let's go and find him. Yeah. Come on, what are we waiting for? I'm Come on. Get it out. Who's there? It's me, Dick. Jimmy. There's reward posters up everywhere. For you. 200 guineas. I've seen six of them just round here. I've seen a couple myself. Aren't you proud? Proud? Of course. It's as big as the reward for Tom King's capture, and he's been a famous eye woman for years. And I should be proud to be gallows bait like him. Your mind's twisted, Jimmy. That's what working for Jeremiah's done for you. Oh, I've retired now, haven't I? Dick, where's your horse? I sold her. I had to. We need every penny. Quickly. To buy passage and get away from here. Who'd you sell her to? To Rake's livery stable near Newgate. He's a decent man. He'll look after her. Where are we going, Dick? I don't know. France first. Or Holland. Then decide. It's not safe here. It isn't easy to find a ship either. Where are you going now? To the docks again. I meet a captain I was told about. I'll see what he can do for us. But first, I'm going to take you and buy you some clothes. <laughs> they wouldn't let you aboard any ship looking like that. Good morning, then. I'd a like you to fit out this young man, from head to foot. Him? Yes. Do you mind? Shoes first. Perhaps you would be so good as to place him in that chair. Dazzling. What should I do with these garments, sir? Whatever you think best. Personally, I'd burn them. Burn them? <laughs> How much is the reckoning? No, just my moment, sir.
Now, sir, and your change, and thank you, sir. It's been a great pleasure serving you. Thank you. I trust the young man is satisfied. He's to be your servant, sir. Uh, no, we're partners. We're partners. Partners? Yes, of course. Good day. Come on, Jimmy. Good day. This. Your servant, sir. I took them out of his pocket. What do you think? Wait here. <laughs> well, that settles that. Now you go back to the stable and wait there while I go to the docks. You better not be seen with me there. All right, Dick. And I'm sorry. Oh, comes the roadest carriage along the dusty lane. Dick Turpin took his money and comes and cried in vain. Hello, Jimmy. <laughs> Jeremiah wants to see you. What for? <laughs> Never you mind. Just come along like a good lad, eh? <laughs> You don't want to get tough, do you? That's against my nature, you know that. We've always been pals, ain't we? Yeah, well, tell us where the fellow is, Jimmy, and we'll share the reward with you. I'm telling you, I'll not betraying him. He's my friend. We're older friends than he is. You owe us a loyalty. Not anymore. Oh, well, if you won't be friendly, we'll have to use a little persuasion, eh? Jimmy, you up there? Well, Mr. Ooh. Fielding? Oh, uh, it's you, Master T. You made me jump. Why'd you come in that way? When you rented me this place, you said there was only one key. Oh, well, I forgot I had another. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. I wanted to talk with you. I've seen the reward posters for you. Fair upset me at first. I didn't realize how valuable my tenant was. Two hundred guineas, eh? That's a lot of money. Made me think. Think what? That we'd better make a new arrangement, Master T. Why? Well, I'm risking my neck harboring a man with a price on his head. You ought to make it worth my while, don't you think so? Supposing somebody was to give you away, I'd be put on a truck. What's this blackmail? <coughs> don't you shock him. <coughs> blackmail? Is that a nice way to talk? This is business, Master T. Now, I'm a poor man, but I come to tell you that between us, we can make a lot of money. We can. Yeah? No, I could have informed on you and picked up 200 guineas, but we can do better than that. What are you talking about? Well, you held up this Lord Carmsden's coach, they say. Well, if he is, why not others? I can tell you when the right parties are aboard, the coaches leaving London, the time the coaches leave, all that. You could, could you? Yeah, that's right. And we go halves in all you make. We do? Well, it's only fair, Master T. It's business. I'm running a risk the same as you. And you think it would 
pay you better than turning me in. Oh, much better. Not that I'd ever think of turning you in, of course. Of course. <laughs> then it's a deal, eh? Why not? Right. Now, look, you lie up here during the day and then work at nights when I tell you and mum's the work. <laughs> what about the little cash advance? To show good faith, eh? You can start spying out the coaches tomorrow. That I will, that I will. Where's the horse? She's being shod. See you in the morning, partner. You and me will make a fortune. I said. Said he could go. You and you and you after him. Follow him. See what he goes. Quick. I did. I found a ship that's leaving tonight. She sails for Holland on the tide at midnight. She's called the Mary Louise. Holland? It makes me feel funny going away from here. I've never been anywhere except here. Ain't you a bit afraid, Dick? Afraid? If I'm afraid of anything, it'd be of staying. I can have no life here. And now it looks as if you can't either. Well, who are you? Uh, name of Fielding, Lord Carlton, sir, my lord. What's this about the man, Tepping? Oh, well, I know where he's hiding you out, know my lord. Where? Stop, my lord, my lord, first. Answer I'm, me. Yes, yes, my lord, I will. Will you but, answer? Yes, my lord, but uh, I don't want nobody to know it was me that talked and got the reward. I'll get my throat cut. Well, that's why I come here. See, I thought if I told you, my lord, you'd see I got paid without nobody knowing. Oh, you did, did you? Uh, yes, my lord. No, 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 see the post that you put out. I wanted to help. I wanted to do the right thing. I wanted to do what you... Oh! I don't want no business with the watch. No, oh, no, we don't. Never mind what you want. Where's the man tapping? Or shall I have the answer beaten out of you? Well, it ain't fair, sir. It just ain't fair. <laughs> all right, all right, I'll tell. He's at a stable in Blackjack Lane, near Orchid. You go on ahead, and we'll be on the wharf in 15 minutes. By the old inn, the prospect of Whitby. The ship's boat will be waiting there. Why don't we go together? If I get picked up, I don't want you caught with me. You've taken enough chances as it is. Off you go. No. Go out this way. All clear. 
I'll see you at the wharf. In 15 minutes. Master T, uh, Fielding. You're coming with us? But what about me reward, my lord, eh? There are two charges against you for horse stealing and for taking a purse upon the high road. You are here to answer those two charges and those only. Is that clear? I have answered. I'm not guilty of stealing. If it hadn't been for me, you would have lost your purse. I advise you to answer only the charges against you, Master Turpin. Prisoner, any witnesses who can speak on his behalf? With the court's permission, I will speak on the prisoner's behalf. Come forward. State your name and address, please. My name is William Evans. This fellow's my legal advisor. What's he doing here? You are William Evans, barrister, and you live in Carmsden in Essex? Yes, my lord. And you appear to have some points to make on the prisoner's behalf. Perhaps you should act as his counsel. My lord, I have known the prisoner all his life. As a hard-working, decent, God-fearing man. In my position as legal advisor to Lord Carmsden, which I have, as of this day, resigned, I was opposed to the eviction of the prisoner from his farm. I considered the reason for it unjust. I will therefore call a witness on behalf of the prisoner. Lord Carmsden. You call me on the prisoner's behalf? My lord, I... The witness will be sworn in. I swear by Almighty God. I swear by Almighty God. The evidence that I shall give before this court. That the evidence which I shall give before this court. Shall be the truth. Shall be the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. So help me God. So help me God. Lord Carnesden, the original charge against the prisoner before these capital charges arose was one of poaching. Yes. Which was tried by you as a magistrate in a court of law with witnesses, a defence. Well, my lord? There was no need to take him to court. Well, you made he... your own court. You are above the laws of England. I offered him the choice of going to court. Or of paying or... a fine under an arbitrary sentence of imprisonment without trial. A fine of how much, my lord? Fifty guineas, was it not? Fifty guineas for poaching one rabbit. All oh, this is entirely irrelevant. Lord Carmsden, you gave the prisoner in this court of yours, which was not a legal court, how long to pay this enormous fine that was imposed? I refuse to answer that. It you is gave not the... him one day. One day. And he asked for more time until his harvest was in. Which you refused? The fellow was insolent. So you he... evicted him from his farm, took away his livelihood, his home, his stock, his horse. Yes, I was within my rights. And the fellow's answer was to rob me. But you had robbed him, my lord, of his chances in life. To ask now for his death is to me, to most men, a monstrous injustice. How say you? The facts are the facts. The prisoner Turpin is a thief and a highwayman. Witnesses have given their sworn testimony. 
The law has to be upheld. Have you finished, Mr. Evans? Yes, my lord, I have finished. But I plead for the prisoner. There are extenuating circumstances in this case. An honest man goaded beyond endurance. I ask for the court's mercy. You have been heard. The witness will stand down. Thank you, sir. Members of the jury, you have heard the evidence in this case. The prisoner Tappin has not denied the charges, but only attempted to justify his actions. Therefore, you have no alternative but to return an unfavorable verdict. Members of the jury, are you agreed on your verdict? We are. Do you find the prisoner guilty or not guilty of the felonies charged? Guilty on both counts. And is that the verdict of you all? It is. Prisoner at the bar, have you anything to say why judgment should not be passed upon you according to law? Only to add my own plea to that of Mr. Evans, my lord. And to say again that I don't consider myself a thief. And that someday in this country, a man will be able to stand trial and know that he'll get justice and not just the law. Yeah. Order in court! Order in court! Richard Turpin, after a careful trial, the jury have convicted you upon two capital charges. And it is my duty to administer the law according to the facts in the case. And on these facts, I shall pass sentence. Silence in court. You will be taken from here to Newgate Prison and there held in custody until a day is appointed for your removal to a place of execution. And there you will be hanged by the neck until you are dead. And may the Lord have mercy upon your soul. Permit to visit the prisoner Turpin. Oh, him. This way. Give it back, boy. Can I have a look out that window, please, mister? Yes. Makes you dizzy, doesn't it? Fellow we were taking down to the hangman once jumped out of that window into the yard. <laughs> Broke his neck with a 40-foot drop instead of the six-foot one waiting for him. How dreadful. <laughs> oh, yes, sir. Shocking. On your feet, Turpin. There's someone... See him here. Mr. Evans. Dick. Model prisoner. There's hardly been a peep out of him all the week. But you've only got a few minutes, Turpin. So make the best of them. I bought you a towel, some soap, a clean shirt. Well, what's the news? Dick, I did everything I could, but... Your appeal's been dismissed. I expected it, really. I tried, Dick. I know. And I'm grateful. They can't kill you. We won't let them. We can't fight the whole world, Jimmy. There's no more to be done. I'm not giving in. Other people have escaped from Nougat, and you can, even now, why Shh. you... That's enough. Time's up. Come along, sir. And you, young fella, say goodbye to him. You need a good night's sleep, Turpin. I should get to Tyburn early tomorrow, sir, if I were you, if you want a good place near the gallows. He swings at eight o'clock. Tomorrow? That's right. It's goodbye then, Dick. 
by Jimmy. Well, sleep tight, Turbin. You've got a big day ahead. Tomorrow's going to draw more crowds than they have for years. Now, stop this. Of course, you can't stop it now, sir. Turpin's caught the public's fancy. That's good to know. But it's true. People are renting windows overlooking the gallows for as much as 20 guineas. They say that Lord Carmsden even paid 25. Go on, get out of here. Well, see you in the morning, Turpin. Bright and early. Goodbye, sir. Thank you for all you've done. Look after the boy. Pray for me. You better say your prayers, mate. It'll be a big day tomorrow. Big crowd. I should be there myself. It's Saturday, you see. I always get a big crowd for Saturday hangings. And they've made this Turpin quite a hero, too. You barbarian. Eh? Hey? Jimmy, keep out of this. Hold this door shut now and wait. Eleven o'clock, remember. I'll tell you everything outside. You're a pack of wild animals. What do you think you're doing? Hey. Anybody want to feel this across his back? Go on, get into your cells. Come on, move. Get into your cells here. And all business out of here. It's before 11. You wait here. I won't be long. If I don't like it, boy, you're risking your neck like this. It's for his neck, isn't it? You worry about him, not me.
in a yard a few streets away. I didn't know she'd be one of them. Well, it's all arranged, Dick. I bought passage to America for the three of us. We sail from Greenwich one hour after midnight. America? You're going too? We're all going, Dick. I've got property in Virginia. This is my chance to see it. Where's Lord Carmston's London house? 27 Martin Street, but why? I have to settle with him before I go. You must be out of your mind. I tell you, I have to settle with Carmston. But this is madness when we're so close to being safe. Take the boy and get aboard. We're not leaving without you. Then wait here. I won't be long. Jimmy, open the gate. Things have been rather a highway revenge he had to take. One day he met Lord Comston and threw him in the lake. Dog, oh, insolent dog. See if you laugh tomorrow when you sweep. He laughs best who laughs last. My turn to laugh. My turn. Good riddance. Made a fool of me. Turned everyone against me. Hang then. Robbed me. Robbed me. But you robbed him. Had to, needed the money. Write that down, my lord. You? Write down that you withdraw the charges against me, or I'll kill you. I've got nothing more to lose by shooting you, so write. Don't shoot, don't shoot! Then write! I, the undersigned. Withdraw the charges against Richard Turpin. Admit to using the law to my own ends by dispossessing him. And would not wish his death because of my injustice to him. Hurry, man, hurry. I am, I am. Because of my injustice to him. This will do you no good. You've been sentenced. Take my chance. At least I can show it to anyone that's heard of me. I must see your master at once. My son when he's born. Oh, now sign. My lord, it's urgent. Stay there. My lord, my lord, it's urgent. Come in. My lord, my lord. The man Turpin's 
escape the jail. But we'll get him, my lord. We trapped two of his friends and we'll grab him when he returns to them. You fool, he's... Put your hands up, all of them. Don't move. Open that door. On your feet, my lord. And in there, all of you. Come on, hurry! Good night and goodbye, my lord. Get out when you can. I'll leave the key. Break the door down! Wait a minute, wait a minute. I can see the key. Give me that sword. Look out, you fool! Big pardon, my lord. Hurry, hurry, fuck it. Come try me, Lord. You want what about my reward? My reward. Yeah, yeah, quiet. You promised me my reward. You promised get out. the wall. Mr. Evans, take Jimmy and go. Go now while you've got a chance. I won't go without you. You heard what I said, Mr. Evans, take him. I'll hold these men here till you're out of the city. But you, Dick. I'll join you later, but go. Dick! Come on, boy, hurry. They won't get away. They'll hang from the same gallows as you, Turpin. I'll see to that. Turn round and face the wall. That's right. Try anything and I'll shoot. You're trapped, Turpin. You're trapped, I tell you. Now we'll wait. Be patient, gentlemen. No, I'm still here. Face the wall. Time for me to leave. So this is goodbye. Can't wait any longer, sir. I'm sorry. Another five minutes. Can't do it, sir. We'd lose the tide. Oh, please. Sorry, son. We can't go without him, sir. We have to. Dick will get another ship and join us when he can. I'm sure of it. No freedom now to find From this day on and years ahead Pursuit is close behind Dick Turpin's on the highway His new life has begun And on the highway he will ride Until his course is run Our story now is ending 
his legends underway. He rides Black Bess as famed as he into the dawning day. An outlaw through injustice with reason to decry. Ahead of him the gallows and the rope on which he'll die. Stand and deliver became his famous cry. Stand 